All right. Uh, obviously got beat by a really good Oregon team on Saturday. Uh, anybody that cared to pay attention to me last week know I was saying they were a complete team. Uh, really no weaknesses. Athletic, fast, long, big, physical. I mean, they're, they're the whole package and uh, very worthy of their ranking. In fact, had they beat Washington, which they were in position to do so, they'd be a top four or five team. And so that's that's my assessment of those guys. They seem to have us on our heels from the opening drive throughout the entire game. So, so it uh, you know we got to move on. We got to put it behind us and flush that one and and uh, respond, which is what it's all about. I mean, you know, every Saturday, 50% of the teams in the country have to respond and regroup and get ready for the next one that coming off a loss. So we happen to be in that category this week. Uh, typically, our guys do a very good job of doing just that. And uh, we're at home again, which is a positive. Arizona State coming to town, uh, coming off a win against Washington State. Probably their, it was their best offensive production of the season. Um, you know, they're a team that uh, is, uh, you know, gaining some confidence, you know, when you look at the film. But uh, we've got to play much better uh, ourselves, coach much better. That's really where it starts, coaching and being better. Put our guys in better position to succeed and to, and to uh, make plays. And so that's our challenge as coaches. And uh, we will do that. And so questions? Let's start with the big guy over here. Okay. With 99 rushing yards total on Saturday, how are you going to get more levitation in the line? Levitation? You actually use that word? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, one of our one of our many shortcomings in the game was not being able to establish a, a good run game, and, and Oregon uh, did a nice job at the line of scrimmage on both sides. I had said that that uh, the real two real keys to the game were to win the line of scrimmage and win the turnover margin, and and um, we weren't able to accomplish that. But uh, we have, when we're at our best, we're running the football efficiently. That sets up the play action game and everything else. And so <clears throat> we've got to find a way to uh, get back on track with that. And it's not panic time. You know, it was one game. And, and uh, we feel like we've got a really good old line, good backs. And so we'll make a, you know, con uh, effort to get that back on track. As typically as the run game goes, so goes the offense. So that's going to be an important part of, of responding this week. Uh, you know, the offensive line had been trending upward. We did not uh, play as well on Saturday as we had been and give Oregon a great deal of the credit for that. I mean, they have some, you know, their tackles played exceptionally well. They're big, strong guys that stay square and use their hands well. And there was really uh, not much running room in there. They, they shut down the gaps. <laughs> Uh, the edge guys are good too, and, and like I said, they're good at all. You know, you can't pick out a position group on Oregon and say there's a weakness. There just isn't one. And so, their front seven was uh, was physical and tough. Um, the safeties did come down and crowd the box quite a bit, and that uh, you know, and if people do that, then you gotta you gotta make them pay and, and try to throw the ball up the field. And we did have some really good individual performances. I thought Devon Bailey had his best game of the season and uh, really could have uh, had three or four more big catches had we been a little more patient and wait for him to come open because uh, I think we came off him too quick a couple times. But but it was good to see Devon play really well and uh, have a, a breakout game of sorts for this season. It seemed the passing game kind of found something there at the end of the half with mm -hmm. that. A two-minute drill? Two-minute drill. Yeah. Is that something that you can utilize more moving forward? Uh, possibly, yeah. We did. Uh, that was probably our. I don't think probably that was our best uh, drive of the game, and and uh, we probably should take a look at that. And we have used that in the past, and and uh, would have probably been a good idea to go to it more in the second half. So hindsight, but yeah, good point. Kyle, um, you guys have not been shy uh, this season about wanting to win a third Pac-12 championship and also make the playoff this year. It's, historically, it's been difficult for teams with more than one loss to make the playoffs. Oh yeah, that's out. Yeah, there's no there's no chance of that. I mean that's historically as you said, it just doesn't happen. And so uh, and we'd have to have some big time help to get back to the championship game. But we needed it last year and we got it. So never say never, but uh, I can certainly with confidence say that the, the playoffs are are not of uh, not in play for us. Kyle is the plan with Brandon Rose to still seek um, a a medical retro yeah, well, he's under the, uh, you know, the you either have a medical redshirt or just don't play in any more than four games, and it kind of 
equates to the same thing, and and right now that's the path we're on for him. Yeah. You said you said a few times this season. You were talking about not getting the run game going. You've said multiple times this season we need to be better, more efficient at you know the throw game, moving the ball down the field in order to ease up the run game. I guess mm -hmm. once again, you know, 120, 130 rushing yards or passing yards. How do you get that? Going yeah, well, we got it last week. You know, we had our best production last week, so we go from our best production to one of our poorest productions, you know, in one week. And again, uh, Oregon is one of the elite defenses in the league, and uh, they had a lot to do with our ineptness and inefficiency. Uh, and again, coaching the game plan, we got to put our guys in better situations. But but uh, we rushed for well over 200, I think it was last week, and and uh, over 300 the week before. So we we. Uh, have done a good job in, in a lot of the games, but but uh, this game didn't do it, and I'll take the responsibility for that. You know, it's my job to make sure we can we can run the football, and, and uh, didn't get it done this week. Kyle, follow up on Josh's question: Do you foresee a, a situation where you would trot Brandon Mills out there? I know he hasn't dressed, and that hasn't been the situation, but is that a scenario there where you do it? Whoever gives us the best chance to win is who will trot out there, and and uh, if Brandon. Uh, becomes that guy, then then yes, that would happen. But but uh, right now, Bryson Barnes is our guy, and uh, that's uh, you know that's our number one quarterback at this point in time. To follow that one up, um, might there be a situation where he gets up to you know dress as QB three instead of Luke? Is he practicing to the point where maybe he, he might dress? Possibility, yeah, possibility. Right now, he's still running the scout team and doing a phenomenal job of that. In fact, he was our scout team player of the week. Uh, two weeks ago against SC and uh, has been given a great look and continues to improve. Um, you know, missing all that time obviously set him back. And uh, had he not missed all that time, he'd be more in the mix. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But here we are with four games left. And, and uh, you know, we'll see if he can uh, elevate himself. But that's really up to him, you know, how he performs. Well, you said after the game, after games like that, you don't want to berate the team or anything. How, right. how do you kind of transition into now the coaching side of that where you, you do have to kind of get after them a little bit and help them move forward with their own stage? Get after the coaches or get after the players? After the players, the coaches, whatever. <laughs> get after myself, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, our players are very prideful. They, uh, they're they smart. They get it. They know that, uh, you know, we didn't play particularly well last week. They know that uh, and that's an understatement. And uh, and again, the coaching is a, is a big part of it. But but we all got to move forward. We all got to flush that and move forward. And and uh, you know, get ready for the next challenge. You can't the old adage. You can't let someone beat you twice. That is very applicable this week for us. And we got to be able to uh, put that game behind us and and uh, set our sights on the Sun Devils. Obviously, Arizona State has a new staff and a lot of work mm -hmm. to do to build the program. But they are a top twenty team in rushing defense. Right. And the other teams that have been in that ballpark have given you problems. I'm wondering how much the improvement in run game is the youth improving and how much is the quality of the opposition? Both. You know, and that's every week of the season. You know, you play uh, you play Georgia. You're probably not going to run the ball very well. Uh, play Alabama. You're not. I mean, it's just that's obviously a, a huge part of the equation. But uh, and Arizona State's been playing some pretty good defense there in the upper half of the league in most every category defensively. And so that you know we expect a big challenge, but but that is uh, you know to answer your question is a big part of of any team success is uh, a lot based on how stingy the defense is they're playing, how good they are, and that type of thing. It seemed like Oregon um, on the sideline was using a like a big screen to you know block play calls, and I think USC did the same thing against you guys um, the week prior. Somebody asked Lincoln Riley about it, and uh, they kind of said that um, that you guys do a good job of grabbing signals. I know that it's not the same as Michigan, obviously, but like teams are apparently are doing that against you. I'm wondering what, what your thoughts are. If your signals are being stolen in game, it's your fault. If you're that simplistic, that easy to, to read, and that easy to decipher, that's your problem. That's not the opponent's problem. So I, I would never have a problem with teams trying to steal our signals. I mean, that's what you're in game for, is you got guys looking at signals and trying to gain any advantage you can. That's like telling your defenders, hey, close your eyes when they come out in the formation so you don't know what the formation is. So, I mean, you want it, you want every bit of 
legal and above board advantage that you can get. And and if you're so simplistic, like I said, that you know you're just giving it away with your signals, then you better take a look at, at your signals. And so, I would never ever personally uh, feel that uh, you know somebody that was doing that to us is out of line because if they're if they're doing it, then congratulations to them, and, and we got to fix things. Talking to the players post game Saturday, asking them kind of what they felt went wrong or wasn't up to the usual level. They all said, well, we just want to come in on Monday, watch the tape, and, and we'll have a better idea then. You brought up the O-line play. Beyond that, like what I guess what kind of stood out on the tape in terms of what you would like, would have liked to We'll start that. with coaches having uh, game plans to put our guys in better position. You know, that's always, you know, I'm not going to any way, shape, or form blame my players. They're, they're, they played hard. They had, you know, they never quit. Uh, you know, from snap one to the to the very end, and so we as coaches got to do a better job of creating better matchups, better schematics, and uh, that's really uh, our you know take as coaches. That's that's where we squarely place the blame is on ourselves. How oh, very serious question. Are we going to start seeing? Very you? serious question. You going to start riding Harley's onto Rice Cycle Stadium before the game? <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a dog and pony show, wasn't it last week? Uh, <laughs> um, you you got to do what you got to do. Take one for the team, and but uh, uh, you know it was it was a uh, it was great having game day here. I can tell you that. Great exposure for us. Wish we would have played better, obviously, but but uh, you're trying to build your brand. You're trying to get exposure, and you're trying to uh, you know. Uh, connect with recruits and, and you know let them know that hey this is a pretty good place exciting place and and so that's what that's all about the last I've heard the last three times that game day was here you guys have lost pretty pretty badly do, mm, do you care about thank that you do I care about that oh I care about that well, yeah I do I mean, the possible correlation between the game day and the loss not jinx the like they're jinxing us I don't know they might be jinxing us. I don't know, but but uh, I, what were those games? Obviously, this week was it Michigan. Was Michigan here for game day? No, no. TCU, TCU. TCU, and then mm -hmm. who else? Washington. We beat Cal. Yeah. Cal. We beat Cal on game day, so I guess it's not a complete jinx. But um, I don't really think there's a lot to that. I you know I hope there's. I thought our guys did a really good job of blocking out the, the noise and distraction. You know, I had some things and obligations that I had to do, but but it didn't affect me. But but I think we did a good job of. Uh, in fact, Cam uh, represented as well in uh, you know in the on the uh, some of the shows there did a great job. And of course, with him not being in the mix right now and, and uh, medical redshirt, uh, that had no effect as well on the team. It seems after that USC game, there was an emotional high. Yeah, they sure was. So there was. Any sort of emotional letdown in the week after? Didn't appear so in practice. Practice, they got after it and had excellent practices Monday through Friday. A um, lot of energy, a lot of juice, a lot of passion, focus. And so I, I didn't uh, detect that. I guess, you know, there could have been some underlying uh, emotion or whatever that was there, but I, I didn't detect that. Kyle, after the game, you said that you didn't want to say it's back to the drawing board, but after a loss like that, What's the first thing that you do when it comes to back to the drawing board? Look at the, uh, what we did as coaches in our preparation and our game planning and what can we do better. That's, uh, that's always where I look first and foremost. We got a bunch of tough guys in that locker room that play hard, that, uh, that are all in and care about what they're doing. And so we, you know, as coaches, got to continually try to play to our strengths uh, personnel-wise and put those guys in, in position. Uh, and again, you know, I, I'm, I'm convinced that's a top four or five team in the nation. I'm convinced of that. Uh, could be wrong and it could play out differently, but uh, they certainly were on that day. I guess where do you feel like there are things you could have done better in terms of putting guys in better positions? Well, maybe attack the perimeter a little bit more. You know, I think we uh, maybe offensively could have got the ball in space a little bit better. And uh, defensively, um, we just didn't weren't as stout as we usually are against the run. I mean, they didn't run for a ton. What they run for 140? Their numbers weren't uh, real gaudy, but they were efficient, really efficient. And so they were still under 400 yards of total low, but and only 18 first downs. But uh, you know, the game was uh, pretty much out of reach by the fourth quarter. So they called the dogs off a little bit, which kept the numbers down a little bit. But but uh, I don't think there was any one area. You know, tackling is what I thought after the game. But we only ended up missing 11 tackles. It seemed like more than that, but we had 11 missed tackles, which isn't, you know, we try to be single digit, so that's not, uh, you know, outrageously bad. But, but uh, you know, I just thought we could have been, 
they just had us on our heels. They had us on our heels like I, like I opened the press conference with. And, and again, that's uh, us as coaches need to do a better job of getting them in a position where they feel more confident. Not that they didn't feel confident, I shouldn't say that, but where, they're, they're, uh, where they function best. Kind of when the hindsight is really focused uh, clearly, do you look back and think maybe throw the ball to Baki more? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's one thing for sure. Yeah, you know he wasn't feeling up to par. You know, he was he, he's a warrior and he was out there, but uh, you know he was. I think you could tell he wasn't his usual self. But uh, but yeah, we should have, uh, could have, and should have done a better job of that. Is that fatigue for Sione? No, that? no. The reps have not been our defense for whatever reason. Well, because we're so good on third down and we stopped the run, we've only averaged like fifty something snaps a game, I believe, and especially lately. And so that's a very mild workload. And I think he only had like 12 or 14 snaps of offense. So 65 snaps, that's not a that's not a heavy workload. There's been some talk, obviously, about maybe he only moved to offense solely. Is that decision still on the table? Uh, no, I think, you know, with four games left, I think we're in a position now where we're, we're uh, we've settled in and, you know, about a 70-30 split, 70% D, 30% O. And I think that's where we'll, we'll uh, continue to stay. What good things did you find on the film as a, as a takeaway from the Good game? things. Um, let's see here. Well, the special teams, even though it didn't make a big impact, they were solid. You know, we punted the ball extremely well, which has been a constant or a consistent theme for our punt team all year long. We had the nice kickoff return off the throwback that set us up right about midfield. Unfortunately, we threw a pick a play or two later to uh, make that kind of voided. But, but uh, that... Um, you know, we didn't do a good job taking the ball away. We, t we only had one. We lost the turnover margin two to one, so we're minus one there. So, so that wouldn't be a positive at all. And uh, we didn't make impact plays on D. You know, had no sacks. We tried to get six or seven impact plays a game, which is turnovers plus sacks, and we had one. So, and again, and again a lot of that is due to the opponent. They had a they had a quarterback that got the ball out of his hand just like that. I mean, he, I'm so impressed with that kid, and and uh, he was close again to 80 percent completion, which he has been all season long. Uh, their backs run hard, they're physical, they're, they got speed, and so they got a lot of good things going for them. Any other questions? Okay, okay. we'll see you guys.